This is part 2 of the mailbag. The last one was nostalgic and today we will play around with my new power supply and other helpful stuff. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. The next one you probably saw already on other channels, but this is a really interesting product and this is why I also bought one. It's very, very small, but extremely powerful. It is a power supply for 60 volts and 6 ampere, RD6006. And it does not come only with this plastic stuff here. I also bought this housing and it's already pre-assembled. I put in a power supply for 60 volts. This I had to assemble, also the fan controller here, but this is peanuts. And now this comes here, like that. I still have to connect it and then we can test it. The whole thing will look like that when it's finished. Very nice lab power supply. And as usual, I forgot something. I also bought a wireless connection, a Wi-Fi connection. And here we see our old friend ESP12F and 8266. And it has to be put in here. I'm sure I can do this later on. I took it out again because I also saw that it needs a battery here, but I have plenty of different batteries, but not a CR1220. And unfortunately it's not delivered with the product, but at least this one can be mounted like that. And later on I can take it out to insert the battery, but at least they provided also a replacement fuse. Here is the fuse and they provided a replacement for that. Now I have to connect these wires to here and to here. I put a little bit of this CPU cooler plaster here on the metal and connected it to the power supply. The first one is here for the fan. For the moment I leave it like that. And now we can try it out that. Everything connected. Switched on, I hope. Nothing. Ah, a second switch on the back of the device. I connected it now to the load here and it's still waiting zero ampere, zero volt. I set now 5 volt and 6.1 ampere, which should be the maximum, I think. We can try, I set, yeah, 6.1 ampere is the maximum. And if we go to volt set, we can switch here. Nice sound. And we have 60.65 volts at the input of this device. Now we switch it on, 5 volt, 1 ampere. Exact. 2 ampere, 3 ampere, 4 ampere, now it's 20 watt, 5 ampere, 6 ampere, and if I go above 6 ampere it stops exact or nearly exactly at 6.1 ampere and it switched off. 0 0.47 volt is not exactly zero, but it switched off. Now, if I go back, it comes back on. Now we go to 50 volt. 50 volt, enter. And now it's 50 volt, 49.98 and five ampere. Now we have 300 watt. So far, no problem. Let's check the voltage. The voltage seems to be right. Now I go up with the voltage close to 60 volt, 51, 
we still have the amperage. I assume that we will not reach the 60 watt, uh, the 60 volt, because the power supply inside only provides 60 volt. 53, 54, 55, and you see now the amperage starts to go down. The voltage is still okay. 56, 57, 58 now, 58 ish. And now it's finished. So it takes about 2 volts for the whole regulation here at 300 watts. Quite good, I think. Because the specification the input of the input voltage is 70 volt, I cranked up my internal power supply to 65 volts, 60 volt, 5 ampere, it's not 6 ampere, it's only 5 ampere, and 300 watt. Here is the listing, I got the one with a W, with a Wi-Fi. It was 53.99. I think I got it. I bought it at the 11.11, so it was a little bit cheaper. And here, 30 dollars the case. And the case is really a very good quality from a color point of view and from a stability point of view. It's uh, well worth the money here. And then, of course, you need the power supply inside. And this is the listing of the power supply I have. It is a 60 volt, 6 ampere. I did not find the 300 watt limit in the listing of the Ruideng power supply, but I assume because it was exactly at 300 watt, I assume this is a limit which probably is uh, somewhere specified, but I did not see it. So everything together is a little bit more than $100. Now this one is definitely for somebody who wants to spend a little bit more money. It's not necessary for most of us. I had once this smaller power supply from the same manufacturer, also with a Bluetooth connection, but uh, it's less powerful, of course much smaller. It also fits on a small desk. This one is quite large here, but if you experiment for example with mot motors and stuff like that, the 60 volt is an interesting feature and also the 300 watt is an interesting uh, feature. If you do not need uh, more than about 20 volts or 15 volts, then you can use here, as I do, a old power supply from a laptop, which is sufficient for most of our projects. So you can even save the power supply if you have a power supply of an old laptop. Laptops have 19 volt power supply. By the way, even after this extensive power testing, nothing was really hot here. And if you are interested in a test about uh, the ripple and stuff like that, you find two videos on the EEV blog, one where Dave made a mistake and uh, got wrong numbers. And then in the second one, he corrected his mistake and uh, measured the right values. And uh, they were, for him, they were okay if I remember right. They provide an impressive PC application on Windows, but unfortunately, it does not work and their answer is for Wi-Fi with PC software it is not stable so we don't support that. It works only with the Android app and the Android app is useless more or less and has only a ranking of about 2.5 or 5 points. That is very disappointing for me. I got those two LED panels for my lab lighting. Each has 70 watts and 12 to 14 volts. So this is a perfect situation where we need quite a lot of power, 140 watts. And this is exactly what we can do with this new power supply. Let's check it. 2 times 14 volt is 28 volt. So we start at 21 and crank it up until we have our desired 140 watts. 120, 140. And here you see these are really beasts. You don't see anything and the camera even cannot focus right away because it is so bright. Incredible. But the power supply works. They are quite cheap. Around $9. $3.69 plus $5.56 for one. And if you order two, 
it's 1478 so they do not calculate two times the full shipping which is quite expensive here this is really an interesting thing if you need a lot of light but of course you have to cool them they will not sustain the 70 watts for a long time i assume the next two are lora modules with a new sx 1262 chips from ebyte this ebyte is a very good manufacturer they have a wide range of different modules and uh, they look like quite high quality so this one is the e22 and this one is the 400m and this one is the 900m this works on 868 915 and this on 433 i bought this one if uh, julian will start his next satellite this might be the module i will use and they are quite big compared to other modules and why are they big because of this 30 here they have 30 db they do not have only a 22 db they have a power amplifier built in and because i'm a licensed ham operator i'm allowed to use those powers on the frequency julian uses by the way pay attention they sell m and t versions the m has the spi interface which is compatible with the libraries usually and the t has a built-in terminal uh, software somehow and there you have you can use at commands or something like that now julian you have to do your work and start the next satellite here is the listing five dollars 72 this is the 400 version and this one here for $5.40, this is a 900 megahertz version and free shipping both to Switzerland. By the way, here you have the listing of the 900 M22S, which is the legal one with 22 dBm output power. And this one is even cheaper, it's $4. It looks very similar, but I think it is smaller. And here I have a bunch of field effect transistors. They are IRL B721. Here is the listing. They are very cheap, 10 pieces, a little bit more than $2, including shipping. And uh, I bought them because they have a very low switch on voltage. And I plan a video about transistors and I wanted to have different transistors to show you the difference. These should be very good with ESP32s because they start at uh, 2 volt and are absolutely 3.3 volt compatible. Not all field effect transistors are compatible with 3.3 uh, volt. This was also a tip from one of my viewers. So we will see if I can use them in the video. And here we have another thing. It shows us magnetic fields. For example here I have some magnets. And here you see the magnetic field. Here is, is the listing, $2.90 plus $3.34 shipping. So it's a little bit more than $6, everything together. And you see here, Andreas Spies, I was obviously the last one who bought this one here. I did not know that this exists, but I learned it from Ben from Applied Science. He played once around with magnets and he had one of those and I thought this is interesting. And now two really handy things, absolutely marvelous. This is the first one. It is a simple USB cable with three different plugs on this side. Apple, micro USB and USB-C. I have one of those always with me also one when I'm on a business trip or on a private trip. You can get them longer. I prefer that one because it's small and it fits in each small pocket. The listing is here for the various length from $2.82 to $3.54 plus shipping 53 cents. The second one is this because I have to present from time to time and uh, you never know what you discover. Usually you discover HDMI or sometimes still this old DVI stuff. And I was quite often happy 
when I was able to use this one because these HDMI connectors still are not always compatible and I had uh, sometimes problems with presenting through HDMI. Now my new laptop, it's a Surface from Microsoft, uh, has a display port which is quite handy but I think you get them also for micro HDMI and stuff like that. This is really something which saved my quite a few times. Usually Ugreen sells good stuff. I have cables and other things from Ugreen and I was always uh, so far happy with them. Here is the listing and probably you discovered it. I said something wrong. This is still a VGA connector, but this is usually available in, at least here in uh, Europe, in many boardrooms or whatever I do present sometimes. It's not cheap, it's $12. But to save me in a situation like that is uh, way more <laughs> value than uh, these $12. For my 8080 project, I found also those here. These are simple devices, eight LEDs connected with eight current limiting resistors, connected to three volts, nothing special, but very convenient if you have to display 8-bit in parallel. And if you have to display 16-bit, you just use two of them. Very, very handy. The second thing I discovered is a simple foam here. This black foam to store ICs. These are now 8251s and those are also 8251s. I have this size here, I think it's 20 by 20 centimeters. You get them in thick and in thin. So this one is thin and you still can mount ICs on both sides. Here I have the same with thick ones, but I think it's not necessary if you do not hit exactly the pins from one side and the other. They are anti-static, so you protect your ICs here and they are stored neatly. I also started to put them in those bins here. On the bottom you see this black foam here. These are the thin ones. Maybe they protect these parts a little bit more, especially maybe if it's only components and stuff like that. But it's not done everywhere. As you see here, you have to cut out every one and put it there. The dimensions do not have to be completely exact. Here you have the listing of the foam, the three millimeter and the 10 millimeter. The three millimeter is 121 and the 10 millimeter is 206 for one sheet. And the one sheet is, is not too bad. You can uh, store quite a lot of small components with one sheet. I ordered here three of them and now I'm really happy with it. I do not think I have to reorder in the next few months. This is the listing of these 8-bit LEDs. They cost $1.66. This is really not a lot. You see here four colors for eight LEDs and we will see them in our project in one of the next videos. By the way, I always had to order two of them. If I ordered four, then they wanted to charge me shipping. I do not accept that because if I buy more, they should also be free shipping if one is already free shipping. Now this you would probably not expect in an electronics lab. They are ordinary carbon fiber rods. 12 millimeter in diameter. What the are they for here in this lab? Together with a little bit of 3D printing, it starts to make a little bit more sense. Here I have more 3D printed parts, but still probably not clear to everybody what this will be in the end. Now come a little bit aluminium tubes cut to different length. Now it's quite obvious. It will be a directional antenna for 144 and 433 megahertz. So this is good for all the satellite experiments for the near future. And because I can produce it myself, it's really quite cheap. 
The guy who made the project claims that it works. Here is the listing. They sell it in different uh, colors. Uh, no, not really. I have those four pieces. 12 is outer diameter, 10 is inner diameter and 500 is the length. And they are $15. Free shipping. Not cheap, but for an antenna you easily pay $150 if you buy it ready-made. Of course the aluminium you have to source locally. This was all for today. I hope these mailbag videos were useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.